Okay guys, today we want to take a look at something called metrics. Uh, metrics is simply just a, another measurement system that is used, um, especially in a healthcare setting. Met metrics is going to be used more often than the household system of measurement, which we actually saw at the end of our proportions chapter. If you guys remember when we were converting teaspoons to milliliters and tablespoons and things of that nature, those are your household measurements, you know, things you see around your house. Um, your metrics are actually based on uh, three different things and then different prefixes, and that's the chart you guys are seeing across your screen here. Um, this chart is showing us the different, um, if you guys see this, sorry, I'm trying to use my pen here, um, is showing us the different prefixes. So I'm going to explain to you guys how we use metrics, and I think at the end of this chapter you guys will find that metrics are actually quite uh, simple, and a lot simpler than what I believe the household system, if you guys remember, you had to remember that one teaspoon was five milliliters, that one cup was eight ounces, you know, things of that nature. You had to remember that in order to perform those conversions, whereas this is going to be a simple decimal movement. So let me explain that to you. So metrics are centered around, if you see here in the center of our chart, we have the word base. What I mean by base is every single metric um, term or unit, you know, measurement, ends in one of three words, either the word gram, meter, or liter. So really, if you think about it, there's really kind of only three units that we're going to be working with here in this chapter, as opposed to in the household system. We saw all kinds of different units, cups, teaspoons, milliliters, ounces, pounds, kilograms. I mean, there was all kinds of things we were looking at. Here, we're really focusing on these three. Where these three different units come in, grams, we use grams when we are measuring the weight of something. So I'm going to just write weight so you guys know that this is used when we're measuring how heavy something is. If I was measuring the weight of, um, say, a tube of chapstick, I'm just looking around my room here and I'm seeing chapstick. That's obviously very, very light, very lightweight. So we may choose to use grams to measure that. Um, even smaller than that, if I was measuring a needle, like a sewing needle, that's going to be even smaller than that tube of chapstick. What happens is I add these different prefixes. These different prefixes are going to change the size of these bases. So if I add the word milli in front of it, we're going to see as we go through these different prefixes, milli is really small. So a milligram, so milli in front of gram, means a, a much smaller unit of weight. So if I was measuring that needle, I would probably use milligrams to measure the weight of that needle. Whereas if I'm measuring, say, something much heavier, like a my patient, you know, a patient who weighs, say, 150 pounds, you know, that's what we use in the household system. But on the metric system, we use kilograms. So the prefix kilo added in front of the unit gram is a measurement for weight, but it's a much larger measurement for weight. Kilograms will be used to measure, again, patient body weight as opposed to milligrams measuring the size of a sewing needle. So that's where we're seeing these different units come in. Again, I'm going to explain these prefixes to, to show you guys that. I'm just, I'm just giving you guys some examples right now. Now, meter, meter is used to measure length or distance. So again, how long something is, whereas in the household system, we may choose to use inches or feet or yards or even miles. Again, we have all these different units to measure different lengths of something. Obviously, I'm not going to measure the distance between Louisville and Florida in inches, right? I'm going to choose to use miles. We choose to use different units of measurement based on you know, the distance that's required there. So that's a very similar very similar to these metric prefixes. Whereas if I was measuring the distance between the tip of a pen and the end of a pen, so my writing utensil is what I mean, my pen, I may choose to use centi. As centi in front of the word meter, a centimeter, you guys might be pretty familiar with a centimeter, um, a centimeter is going to measure a small distance. Whereas a if I add the prefix kilo in front of meter, a kilometer, or sometimes pronounced kilometer, is very comparable to 
a mile that will, you know, again, not the exact same measurement, so not the same equivalent, but very similar to what, you know, the United States uses to measure long distances. Uh, the different uh, countries that, that stick with the metric system, they use what's called kilometers, so much longer distances and lengths. And lastly there, the prefix, or I'm sorry, the base liter is used to measure a volume, so a liquid measurement then. So we are very familiar with probably two liters, right? A two liter that you can buy in the grocery store of your favorite Coke or soda. Um, that is very much just that base. It's just two of them. It's two liters of fluid. Um, again, we change that, you know, the different prefix in front of that word liter depending on the amount of fluid. If I took maybe, say, just a medicine cup that comes with your, you know, your over-the-counter medications like NyQuil, we get those little plastic medicine cups, typically those hold about 30 milliliters of fluid, which we know is equivalent, based on our equivalents from a couple weeks ago, we know is equivalent to about two teaspoons of liquid. So that is showing you that the prefix milli added to the word liter is a very small measurement. I mean, 30 of those fit in that little bitty tiny medicine cup. So milliliter, milli added to the word liter, is showing us a very small liquid measurement. Whereas, again, if I was measuring something larger, such as the amount of liquid in, say, a swimming pool or, again, a lake of some sort, I may use a much larger unit. So these, these ones on the left are showing us our larger units. Let's explain these prefixes a little bit further so you guys can, can better understand that. So I'm going to show you guys, and I'm showing you guys these values and what these different prefixes represent. In fact, let me, let me actually remove, where's my, let me remove these guys here so you guys can get this out of the way. So I'm going to show you guys these different values, but I, I want you guys to know right now that really we're not going to have to memorize these values. You don't have to, I'm going to show you guys uh, in terms of numbers, what these different prefixes represent. But there's a reason why I'm showing you that. I'm going to make it even easier. So bear with me for just a second. So base is here in the middle. So everything is going to be centered around this middle unit. Remember, that was our grams, meters, and liters without any you know, prefix in front of it. So there by itself. So we use these sometimes. Uh, so we'll give those a value of, say, 1. So it's just right there in the middle. So as we go through this, just to show you guys and give you guys a little visual of what I mean by this, um, the unit meter, for instance, actually a meter by itself without any prefix added to the front of it is very similar to a yardstick. So again, not exactly the same distance as a yard, but very, very, very similar. So maybe within, you know, an inch or two or a couple inches. So if we picture this one meter, as we go through these different prefixes, I'm going to show you guys how it changes this base, for example, here. So one of our bases, again, is meter, but all these prefixes change all of these bases the same way. Again, it just depends on what we are measuring, whether we're measuring a weight, a liquid, or in this instance, we're measuring a length. So let's start with going to the left. I want to show you guys what these these prefixes represent. The prefix deca, which you guys probably won't see very often, that's a 10, sorry, uh, has a value of 10. So what that means is if I were to add the prefix deca in front of any of these bases, it means that we have 10 of them together. So that, that's showing you how big that is. So a decagram would be 10 grams, a decaliter would be 10 liters, and now picturing that meter stick, imagine I lined 10 of those meters end to end to one another, then I may choose to use a decameter to measure a much larger distance. So maybe between, um, let's say between my house and let's say uh, four or five houses down the street, I may not measure that in meters because that may take a while. Um, we may choose to use decameters. It's not as far as a mile, it's just a couple houses down, but I may choose to use decameters as that's a bigger measurement. So that's just an example. Again, you probably won't see deca as often. Same thing with hecto. Hecto means 100. So again, same example. If I added hecto in front of meter, a hectometer is 100 meters lined end to end to one another. A hectogram is 100 grams, and so on and so forth. Now one you guys will be familiar with is this prefix kilo. Kilo means 1,000. 
as a kilometer. Again, oftentimes those countries that are on the metric system, um, they use kilometers. You may have watched, um, sometimes you see movies where they say that it's, you know, we've got to go, you know, 10 kilometers to get to the next town, or I'm going so many kilometers per hour. It's because the, the movie is based in a country where they are using the metric system, uh, as opposed to our mile that we use in here in the United States. So very comparable, again, not exactly the same, but just showing you guys where we would use that. And a kilogram, again, patient body weight is oftentimes measured in kilograms. We'll see that pretty often as we get into dosage calculations. Uh, so heavier objects that we're measuring weight, kilogram measures patient body weight, and kiloliter would be as if we had 1,000 uh, liter. So again, imagine a two liter cut in half, that's a liter. And then we just take, the, you know, if we had a thousand of those, that would be a kiloliter, for example. Okay, now let's go the other direction. Let's take a look now going to the right of that base. So the prefix deci, now uh, opposite of deca, deci means one tenth instead of ten. So what I mean by that is if I took that meter, if I were to cut it into ten equal sized pieces, so let's say I, you know, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not being exact here, but let's say I cut that into 10 pieces. One of those would be a decimeter because it is one-tenth of that meter. If you guys see what I mean by that. So it's one-tenth of our base. So one-tenth of a gram would be a decigram. All right, again, something you're probably not going to see super often. Centi, you guys may have seen centimeters before. We see centimeters on our ruler, but a centimeter is literally one one hundredth of a meter. If I now cut this into even smaller pieces, and I'm taking those and cutting this meter into 100 pieces, one of those would be a centimeter. So one meter holds about 100, not about, holds exactly 100 centimeters on it. So it's equivalent. One meter is 100 centimeters. One one hundredth of a gram would be a centigram, and, and so on and so forth there. Okay, the prefix milli, now we're getting even smaller. One one thousandth. You see we're kind of going the opposite of what we did previously. Now I'm going even smaller. I can't really cut that even smaller. A millimeter, if I cut that into one, one thousand pieces, then I have a millimeter. One of, one of those would be a millimeter because it's one one thousandth of a meter. So 1,000 millimeters fit into that one meter stick there. One one thousandth of a gram would be a milligram. So again, when we're measuring much smaller things, milligrams will often be seen when we are measuring dosages. So medication dosages you may see on the side of packaging for, say, Advil or NyQuil, whatever your medication is that you're looking at, it tells you how much dosage is in there. You may see that there are 500 milligrams in every tablet of that Advil, that means how much medication, how much weight is in each of those tablets. We'll get to that a little bit later when we get into dosages. All right, and lastly, guys, we get into our micro. I'll explain those two X's here in just a second, but we get to micro, and micro means one one millionth. So six zeros back there. So again, this is going to be even smaller. We're not going to be able to cut that into it because a micro would be something we would have to use a microscope to be able to see. Um, but if we cut that meter into a million pieces, then we would have micrometers there. We're looking at one one millionth of that meter stick, or one one millionth of a liter. If I took, again, half of a two liter is a liter. If I took one one millionth of that, we're going to see the teeniest, tiniest little drop being taken from that liter, uh, something we could probably barely even see, and that would be a microliter then. So that's what we're looking at here, just to kind of give you guys a visualization of what these different prefixes represent. Now, the, pur the purpose of me showing you guys this is that you can see metrics are all based on units of 10, very similar to our place values. Just like our, again, if you remember our place values, they were tens, hundreds, thousands, and we followed that same order. Um, same thing when we were going looking at decimals, it was tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I show you that is because what we can do with this then, metrics are even easier because when we're converting within something that where we're only associating with values of 10, we only have to move a place value or a decimal place in that, in that aspect. Let me give you an example here. 
So let's, let's, let's think about this for a second. What I showed you guys when we were talking about centimeters, I told you guys that a centimeter would be one one hundredth of a meter. So therefore, 100 centimeters fit onto one meter, right? So if I asked you guys, okay, if I wanted to convert six meters, and I wanted to know what that was, and I'm just going to abbreviate here, centimeters. Well, based on this knowledge, we'd be able to say, well, if one meter is 100 centimeters, then therefore two meters would be 200, and six meters would be 600, right? So you could, you could do that. We could memorize all of these different conversions and say, okay, well, yeah, that's how we, just like we did with the household system. Or here's something even easier. Like I said, we can instead, when we think about these, these metrics being based on units of 10. Instead, if we just got to know this chart, and I'm just going ahead and erasing all these values to get them out of, out of your way. Instead, so I'm gonna go back again, the question said six meters, and I wanna know what that is in centimeters. Obviously we know the answer is 600, but I wanna show you guys using the method that's much easier. We can use this chart since, again, as I mentioned, everything's based on units of 10, you can use this chart to, as kind of like a map, kind of like a road map, showing you where you're starting, where you're going, and then you simply just move your decimal that way. Let me show you. So in this question, meter. Meter is what we're starting. What, we're, what, the question, what we have is where we're going to start on our, on our road map up here. We have meters and we're trying to convert it to centimeter. So the prefix centi is where we're going. So if we have meters, that means we're starting at the unit base. That's our start on our map. Because again, meter without any prefix in front of it means again that it's, it's one of our bases. Then we're going to centi. So as you guys can see on this map here, we've gone from base to centi, which is to the right. Right, we're going from base, our start is base and our end is centi, so we're moving to the right. And we're going to count the number of places that we moved to the right. So what I mean by that, to get from base to deci is one, to get to de from deci to centi would be two movements. We're just counting the movements. And so since my map told me to go two places to the right, I'm going to do just that with my decimal. So with six, that's what we have, six. Six is a whole number, so we have a decimal right behind it, just as all whole numbers are assumed to be right behind it. So my map told me to go two places to the right, so I'm moving it once, twice. Again, if my decimal ends up here, I have to fill these empty spaces with zeros. So my decimal is no longer there behind the six, it's now behind that zero, so therefore we have 600. And this works every single time, guys. You can do this with any metric conversion. You can simply look at this chart as a map. So if I had, for instance, let's say I have, um, how about 4,000 uh, milliliters. So I'll write it out so you guys can see the prefix. Milliliters, and I want to know what that is in liters. I want to know what that is in liters. So again, what we have is where we're starting. So I have 4,000 milliliters. So focus on the prefix there. I'm starting here at milli, and I'm trying to end, well, there's no, no prefix there, so we know liter is one of my bases. So if I'm starting at milli and I'm ending at base, I'm going left this time. Starting here and ending here would be to the left. And now I'm going to count the movements. To go from milli to centi is one movement, centi to deci is two, and then deci to base would be three. So three places to the left. So with 4,000, so again, 4,000 is a whole number, so all whole numbers have that assumed decimal right there behind it, at the very end, very far right. And my map told me to go three places to the right, so I'm going to go one, two, three. So it ends up right behind the 4, making that the whole number 4. So notice in this question, I, I told you guys at the very beginning, we're focusing on the prefix. That is because even if this question, we'd get the same answer if this question had a different base. What I mean by that, if this question instead was 4,000 milligrams, 
and I'm converting that to grams. This is actually also going to be 4. That is because I'm still looking at the same number where what I'm starting. I'm still starting at the unit milli, and I'm going to, since there's no prefix in front of this, grams is one of my base, so it's still a milli to base conversion. So it's still three places to the left. It would be the same thing if this said 4,000 millimeters to meters. So the prefixes are what we're focusing on, on here. The difference between these questions, in this question, 4, 000, the first one, 4,000 milliliters to liters, again, liters just means we're talking about converting liquid. So it's like saying that I have 4,000 milliliters, so again, thinking that's a, you know, typically what we use to measure a smaller amount of fluid. Uh, so like, again, thinking about those medicine cups. But I think this makes more sense in liters, so I'm converting it to liters. Grams, I'm measuring a weight. So that's the only difference here. So why, you know, when we're converting that. And this is going to come in handy when we get into our dosage calculations. So we'll explain that a little bit further later on. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at another one. Let's say I have, uh, let's say... 5.7, let's say, kilometers, and I want to know what that is in meters. So notice they both end in the word meter, so all of these questions will always end in the same base. So it'll always be meters to meters, grams to grams, liters to liters, just different prefixes. And that's what's happening here. My prefix, what I have, is a prefix kilo, which is right here. I've just abbreviated that there, so it's kilometers, and I'm trying to convert it to meter. Meter is one of my bases with a, a prefix in front of it. We know that that means base. So in this question, I'm starting at kilo and ending at base, which means I'm going to the right. Okay, I'm going from here to here, so that's going to be to the right, and let's count. Again, we don't count where we start. We count the movements. So to go from kilo to hecto would be one movement. Hecto to deca is two movements and then deca to base is three movements. So here, in this number, we actually have, have a decimal to start with. The last two examples, we were looking at whole numbers, so we had to add the decimal in there. Here, the decimal's right here. So this is the decimal that we are going to move based on what our chart has told us to do. Our chart says to move three places to the right, so I'm going to take that decimal and I'm going to move it one, would take me behind the seven, two behind an added zero, three behind a second added zero. So this would be 5,700 meters. So every single time that's all you're doing is taking where you're, you're, you're looking at where you're starting and where you're going. Whatever that is on the map is what you do with your decimal. Now let me explain those two X's in between milli and micro down here. So if we remember back to our you know, our values. Again, I told you guys you all didn't have to remember those different values, but remember they uh, they told us because they were based on units of 10, that's what allowed us to move the decimal. If you remember, deci was 1 tenth, centi was 1 one hundredth, milli was 1 one thousandth, but micro was 1 one millionth. So if you think about that, if I were to write those in, look, our, our denominator here has one zero, two zeros, three zeros, six zeros. So I have gone from one, two, three to six. Here's where those two X's come in. These two X's are holding the place value for our one, and again, think about your place values too, if that helps, instead of just the number of zeros. Think tens, hundreds, thousands. Well, then it's ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then millions. So if, again, you're thinking of the zeros, that would be your, then, four zeros, and then your five zeros. Now, the difference is there's no, there's no um, prefixes for these two different place values, so there's no need to stop there or start there. We're not going to see any questions that have any, you know, prefixes that belong at these particular place values, but there has to be something there to represent the movement. There has, we're going to have to move at, you know, to those different place values. So given an example, let me show you guys. So if I have, say, 
Um, how about, let's say, 3.5, let's say, milligrams. I'll write this out so you can see the prefix there. And I want to know what that is in micrograms. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we're starting at the prefix milli and we're ending at the prefix micro. So we're starting here at milli, milli and we're ending at micro. So on my map, milli to micro is to the right. And again, I'm, I'm going to count those two, you know, the, the way that it takes to get there, I'm going to count those, those x's as place values. So for instance, here, milli to my, I'm sorry, milli to x is one movement. To the second x is going to be two movements. Finally, to the micro is three movements. So again, you're never going to start or stop here at these x's, but you do have to move to those x's to represent those place values. So in this question, milli to micro is going to end up being three places to the right. So that means we're going to take that decimal between the three and the five and move it one, two, three places to get 3,500 or 3,500. So don't forget those X's and that they serve a, vor a very important um, purpose there between milli and micro. So guys, that's pretty much your metric system. If you've got that chart down, you've got metrics down. It's just a matter, again, of focusing on the question and thinking about this chart. Now, eventually, you know, for right now, you might not have to memorize this chart. As long as you have this chart in front of you, you're good to go. Eventually, though, when you get further into your nursing classes, you guys will eventually need to have metrics down. It won't be something that you'll have, be able to have in front of you all the time. So, although this sounds incredibly silly, there is a way to create a mnemonic device. If you guys remember what mnemonic devices are, are a way of memorizing something. Um, whether it's creating a funny sentence to remember, an acronym, or acrostic of some sort, that's a mnemonic device. We, we've created mnemonic devices before. Um, for instance, um, some of you guys may have been taught to remember the order of operations, which was the parentheses first, exponent second, multiplication, then the division. Uh, again, well, it's not, even, it's not even multiplication, then division. It's multiplication and division together. That's besides the point. Um, but either way, we were taught, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we created that sentence to remember the letters for P for parentheses, E for exponents, because it was just easier for us to remember a sentence that made more sense. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We can do the same thing with this. Instead of having to memorize kilo, hecto, deca, base, that's hard to do. So this, there's, I think there's one, there's a mnemonic device in your all's book, um, but I didn't like it very much because it doesn't uh, include everything. Um, in one of my old textbooks, it used something that I thought was a little bit more helpful and again, incredibly silly. But to remember the letters of these, you can remember this sentence. Kiss, for the K, Harry, dogs, but drink chocolate I'm trying to write it to where it's right under milk and then as if you're addressing your mom I'm going to put a comma there to show that we're addressing mom your M and O and mom again are your two X's so there's your sentence kiss hairy dogs but drink chocolate milk mom it's a silly, silly, silly mnemonic device, but it helps us to remember the letters for our metrics there. K for a kilo, H for hecto, D for deca, base, or B for base, then there's your deci, centi, milli, and then lastly your micro. So again, when you say this in your head, <coughs> when you're starting to memorize this, you could say kiss hairy dogs, but oh whoops, but <laughs> that's a B. Drink, there's always that those two Ds. Drink, chocolate, milk, and then mom. And then remember your M and O and mom, your first M and O and mom are your uh, X's. Uh, just remember the first D is DECA, the second D is DECI. I'll be honest with you guys, again, you're not going to see DECA and DECI very often. The two that you want to 
make sure you're familiar with the difference between the two M's, milli and micro. So if it helps, what I sometimes do, uh, as I write this down, I put a little C behind that very last M, and it reminds me that that is micro. So that helps you guys to remember it without having to always reference this metric chart. It helps you to, to remember that. I'm going to show you guys in, you know, one other way that um, I think a lot of people have found to be helpful. Uh, they have chosen that instead of doing this, instead of memorizing this chart, they remember your most common units, and that would be the ones that you guys are going to see more often. And let me explain that as I get rid of everything up here. Okay. Um, this is just an alternate method that I'm showing you guys. It's called the stair step method. I'm only showing you guys this as, again, it's an alternate method for this chart. That if you like the decimal movement chart and you want to stick with that, you can go ahead and stop this video now. Um, but as I've mentioned, again, your most common units are going to be these right here. Your kilo, which is, again, typically common in measuring patient body weight. Base, as we'll oftentimes see grams when we're measuring dosages, and then milli and micro, especially with dosages as well. Um, hecto and deca, you're not going to see those very often, uh, if ever, especially in nursing, so that's not something I would really worry about. Same thing with deci and centi, and obviously there's no prefixes for those two X's there. So, um, some people choose to really just remember those. Notice in some of the examples that we've worked with, we've only moved either three places left or three places right. You may every once in a while have to move six places, but I'll, I'll show you an example here in a second. The reason, another way we could do this is to think this. Whenever we're converting from one unit, and I'm going I'm to show you guys an example with the decimal movement right now, uh, just to show you guys something. If I'm going from, say, if I have seven grams and I want to know what that is in milligrams. Yes, our decimal movement method said to go from base to milli, so that's what we're looking at in this question. I'm moving one, two, three places to the right. Because the, and so what that is, yes, with our decimal moving one, two, three places to the right would make this 7,000, and that's correct. The reason why this works is because, again, we're based on units of 10 here. Every movement to the right is a multiplication by 10. Moving from base to deci is times 10, times 10 again, and then times 10 a third time. So it's like three times tens, or in other words, times 10, 100, 1,000. It's like we're adding a zero with every, uh, what we're multiplying by, we're adding a zero with every movement. So 7 times 1,000 is what we could have done there. And yes, that would have given us the same thing. And that's what I'm getting to. I'm going to show you guys an alternate method, how we could really just kind of stick with knowing that. If we're going to the left, if say if I had, um, I don't know, if I had say uh, 800 micrograms, and I'm trying to convert that to milligrams. I'm going from micro to milli. So yes, my, my decimal movement chart says that I can go one, two, three places to the left. So with 800 being a whole number, taking that decimal and moving it one, two, three places to the left makes it 0.8. So I'm going to write that in as 0 0.8. Again, 0 0.8 is just fine, but I want you guys to start thinking about getting used to putting that... Um, that zero in front of any decimal point, as in, in the nursing field, that leading zero is going to be really important in front of a decimal point. So you don't want to start a number with a decimal. Okay, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Right now I'm showing you guys that that is 0.8 because we moved it three places to the left. Moving your decimal to the left is the same thing as dividing by 10. Technically what happened in this particular problem, we divided by 10, 10 again, 10 again, or in other words, divide by 10, 100, 1,000. If we would have taken 800 and divided it by 1,000, that would have given me the answer, 0 0.8, if I did that in my calculator. So some people, when looking at the metric units here, the, the metric conversions, they simply use what's called the stair-step method. And what the stair-step method does is it requires them to simply only remember 
those four units. If we just remember kilo, base, milli, and micro, your four most common units that are underlined there. What they do, again, what we've done is we've taken those same four units and we've just turned it sideways. We're just looking at it diagonally here. And again, but we're only, oops, I didn't mean to do that. We're looking at it in, in referencing what I just showed you guys as the 1,000. So the times or divide by 1,000. So what the stair step method shows us is that any time, this, computer, this thing is moving so slow, that any time we are moving down a step, so I'll write this over here. Anytime you go down one step, and that one step is important, I am going to multiply by 1,000. So that was that first example I just showed you guys when I was converting from 7, uh, I think it was grams to milligrams or something like that. We moved it three places to the right. I told you guys that times 1,000 would have been the same thing. In the next example, when I showed you guys the micro to milli, when we're going up one step, up one step, sorry, handwriting is terrible. That's the same thing as dividing by 1,000. So again, this is just an alternate method if you don't want to use the decimal movement method, but I'm going to show you guys the next couple examples using both. So how either one would work, and I want you guys to just stick with the one that works for you. So if I have, say, 8.3, let's say... No, I'm just going to abbreviate it because I'm running out of space. Milliliters, and I want to convert that to microliters. So, yes, using our decimal movement chart, that would be from milli to micro. So if we counted, again, that's to the right because we're starting at milli and ending at micro. So I'm going to move one, two, three places to the right. So 8.3, moving that one, two, three places to the right would be 8,300. Totally correct. So if you're using that decimal movement method and that's what you like, stick with it. For those of us that want to try the stair step method, here's what that would look like. If I'm, if I'm going from milliliters to microliters, that is milli on my stairs here, going down one step to get to micro. I'm converting it from milli to micro, and, and when we go down one step, that means we simply just have to take that number and multiply it by 1,000. So you can simply just use your calculator. 8.3 times 1,000 is going to give you 8,300 or 8,300. So again, it's just to each his own. Some people like that decimal movement method, and some people would prefer just remembering to multiply you know, by 1,000 or divide by 1,000. If I have... Uh, let's say, mm, let's say this time I have 750 milligrams, and I want to know what that is in just grams. So milli is where we're starting again, but this time I'm going to gram, so I'm going to my base. So decimal movement method says to go three places to the left. So 750, since it's a whole number, decimal starts behind the zero. Moving it three places to the left would be 0 0.75. The decimal ends up there in front of the 7. Now, if I'm using the stair step method, again, I'm starting at milli. But this time, I'm going from milli to base. So milli to base would be up a step. So therefore, I could have just taken that 750. Remember, going up a step is to divide by 1,000. 750 divided by 1,000 is... 0.75 or 0 0.75. So this is just, again, whichever method works best for you. So stick with what you feel comfortable with. Okay. One, one thing I want to show you guys, everything we've looked at has so far been, you know, your most common conversions is typically moving three places to the left or right, or in other words, times or divide by 1,000. Um, I want to show you guys, sometimes we have to move multiple places. What I mean by that, if I have, um, let's say, how about, let's just say 5 grams, and I want to know what that is in micrograms. On our decimal movement method at the top, our chart, that would be gram, would be here at our base, and I'm trying to convert it to micro, 
which will be all the way down there at the end, that's going to be six places to the right if we were to count that. Base to deci is one, two, three, four, five, and then finally landing on micro would be six. So five being a whole number, the decimal starts there behind the five, and I'm going to move that six places to the right would coincidentally add just six zeros to the end of that. So making that five million, and that is a correct answer, five million. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have to move, you know, again, more than just our normal three places. On a stair step, now what would happen here, if using the stairs, how you would convert that, again, that was five, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That was five grams to micrograms. On the stairs, gram is here, and I'm going down now two steps to get to micrograms. Anytime you have to go up or down multiple steps, don't confuse that with taking that and then multiplying it by 2,000. That's what a lot of people want to do. They think every step represents 1,000, so 2 would then be 2,000. Instead, each and every step is times 1,000, meaning that your first step Sorry, I accidentally turned the microphone off, guys. So that means your, your first step is times 1,000, and the second step is times 1,000. So therefore, what that means is you're going to take that 5, and you're going to multiply it by 1,000, and then you're going to take that answer and multiply it by 1,000 once again. So 5 times 1,000 would be 5,000, and then multiplying it by 1,000 again would give you the 5 million that we got a second ago. If you had multiplied 5 times one, or five times 2,000, you're going to get an answer of 10,000, and that is an incorrect answer. So remember that, that if you're using the stair step method, if you have to go up or down a step twice, you do that step twice. So multiply by 1,000 two times. So don't get it confused with multiplying it by 2,000. That will give you the wrong answer. All right, guys, so I've got a couple of review videos in the review video fo folder for you guys to, re to remind you guys, again, two different methods. You've got your, your decimal movement method, if that works best for you, and then I've got a separate review video on simply just the stair step method if you want to stick with that. Again, a lot of nurses oftentimes stick with that method because it means that they only have to remember the kilo, base, milli, and micro. So if that's easier for you to do that, definitely, but totally up to you guys. All right, guys, so that is metrics. Let me know if you guys have any questions.